It's been a few days since I put forward my views on the four sh new shows there this autumn. It's time to look at a few more to see if I impress after their first episode, or if they're destined to be dropped quicker than a bad simile. This is part two of the 2016 Autumn Anime Preview. Airing on Mondays, we'll start with the scorching Ping Pong Girls. Why they're scorching? I don't know. They weren't massively on fire in the first episode, but I did notice they were sweating a lot at various points, so maybe someone just turned the central heating up too high. Ping Pong Girls, as I'll now be calling it to save time, is a show that for all intents and purposes is Saki, the table tennis version. Looking at the main girls, we'll start with a super competitive star player, Agui. A girl so destined to top the Twin Tails subreddit, Best Girl Poll, that she even has an upvote in her hair. She has a school star player, she's best at everything, and boy does she know it. She doesn't play for the love of a game, but for the loving stares of underclassmen. The other lead girl is Kiyori, a super energetic puppy. Seriously, she has a bone in her hair, that's not a euphemism, as I don't recall seeing a single male character anywhere in the first episode. Agri finds a loss to a school gate when she transfers in. Now, Kayori is good. She'll play anyone. Work up a sweat? Did I mention a sweat yet? The show is a Salafiliac's dream, and beat them in a resounding, bouncy smile. The other three characters we've not really been introduced to fully yet. There's a the quiet and aloof girl, Hakuto. The other energetic and slightly perverse, dim girl, Hanabi. And a walking pair of breasts with a ping pong bat, Mune. It's actually almost hypnotising watching her play. Back and forth, back and forth. Her ball goes around a lot as well. Overall, Ping Pong Girls just about gets a pass on me. It's a bit of harmless fun, with a whole lot of silly fan service and jiggly pokery. Mostly come from Mune and Hanabi in that order. The show is promised to become a more in-depth sports anime. A bit like Saki, only with more sweaty balls. Scorching Ping Pong Girls is currently streaming on Country Rolls on Mondays. Next up is the first of three shorts in today's preview video, Ninja Girl and Samurai Master, also known as Nobunaga's Shinobi. It's a short comedy series where a young eager shinobi girl, Chidori, is recruited to serve as one of the Oda Nobunaga's Shinobi, with a childhood friend and secret admirer, Tsukizo in tow. Chidori is enthusiastic, cute, but overall a real good ninja. She really admires a Nobunaga after he saved her life as a kid. Nobunaga, meanwhile, is shown as the same stern-faced leader he usually is. Shows a bit of a softer side when dealing with Chidori unofficially. It's not going to be winning any Best New Show awards, but for a three minute version, well, after a long hard day in work, it's worth watching. Ninja Girl and Samurai Master is airing on Crunchyroll on Tuesdays. Next up, we join the forces of the 502nd Joint Fighter Wing, Brave Witches. A spin-off comes sequel to 2008 and 2010 series Strike Witches, Brave Witches brings us to a brand new front of attack into another World War II era alternative Europe. Seriously, this is the second anime this season so far and it only takes place in an alternative World War II setting but also features a witch as one of the main characters. Between this and Izetta, however, we won't be having too much trouble figuring out which witch is which, as the two shows are vastly different so far. Izetta appears to be going for a realistic, except for magic route. Wasp Brave Witches is very much an idealised Europe fighting aliens in a war setting. We join our lead girl Hikari, who isn't Yoshika Miyafuji no matter how much she seems to have in common with her to begin with, in a little part of a Fusu Empire, also known as Japan. She's a very enthusiastic girl with little skill to show to begin with. The usual type of rough diamond, we start with a beginning of a show like this. She wants to be a witch to fight the Nyoi and protect everyone like her sister, who is somewhat of a local and national hero. Sadly for Hikari, she has a bit of a dunce when it comes to doing combat drills and flight manoeuvres. But we're given the obvious hints that she fails as she's trying too hard. And she actually has a bit of skill, an obscene amount of stamina locked up in a small body. One thing leads to another, and she ends up facing off against a mean girl who picks on her. And through a series of unexpected and very much expected turns, ends up saving her life. As you would do if you're a nice person or a main character in an anime. If you've seen any of the Strike Witches series before, you already know if you're going to like this or not, so it's not worth me telling you ever to watch it or not. 
However, for those on the outside looking in, Brave Witches, if it follows the same pedigree as the previous series, will be a somewhat cheesy, very fan servicey, but overall interesting look at aerial combat against aliens. Fans of cute girls wearing no trousers and World War era dogfights apply within. Brave Witches is airing on Wednesdays on Crunchyroll. The second short of the day is Nezo Takine, an anime about an office girl who's secretly an otaku and took it up to fan, who ends up being transported to a strange dimension where she has to solve puzzles. Yep, I've got no idea either. Maybe the puzzle is trying to find a plot, but again, choking in at 7 minutes 30, it's not really going to be a plot heavy series. We quickly introduced to our three main girls, the lead girl being Natsuko, a perfect office lady, except her hobbies that is surely going to factor into something at some point, I'm sure. We also have Yoshie and Kyoka, the receptionists and Natsuko's friend. Don't ask me anything about them, I haven't got a clue yet, except one is also a fan of Takusatsu. I'm going to give this one a second chance. It was cute enough, but didn't really stick with me. I'm not holding out too much hope for it to be the next Galko chan but it could be a good diversion. Nazo Takine is airing on Crunchyroll on Wednesdays, another one. The third short is a returning series I mentioned last time out. I've had enough of being a magical girl second season. It's a short series lasting just four minutes per episode, but it really has a heart and packs a whole lot of fun into those four minutes. For those who haven't seen the first series, you really need to go back and watch it. It's about a girl called Yuzuka who gets tricked into being a magical girl. I've not seen that before. But with no negative consequences except her costume being a cute pink bikini. That's pretty much it. Nothing really happens, and the episodes never really have much to do with anything either. There's no obvious punchline or end point, they just end. This is just part of a series charm. You never know what when the end is actually going to happen, but don't try to telegraph the obvious punchline and... There's never, there's not always a punchline anyway. It's definitely a show you should watch if you like cute girls and are doing cute things and cute costumes. Yuzuka's friend Chia is a little bit too Mr. to Yuzuka, which is also kind of fun in a own way. And again, you guessed it, I had enough of being a magical girl second season is also on Crunchyroll, also on Wednesdays. Finally, we have another highly anticipated return this autumn, Sound Euphonium 2. As ever when I'm talking about sequels, it's always a good idea to have a quick recap of our first series. The main girl Kuriko is in a brass band at a new school, along with her new school friends Hazakin Sapphire. Sorry, Mido. She doesn't quite like being called Sapphire. She also befriends, eventually, a girl from her old school called Reina. She's initially wary of her because Kumiko thinks like she's hated by her. A lot of band drama happens, and they're doing wedding, wedding concerts, and they're doing okay overall actually. And so a lot of band girls are back for another season. And there's probably going to be a whole lot more drama revolving around, from the looks of it. The mysterious problems which caused the second year student suspension of the first series. As you might be able to tell from the artwork, this is very much a Kyoto animation series. It really shows. From fluid animation to a great camera work and the unexpected but interesting scenic shots. Seriously, Kyoani are legends when it comes to making a show look interesting. And we treated something extra special with UFO Season 2, with the first episode being a dual length special reintroducing us to our already known girls, and also bringing to the fore some girls that were already in the last show, just in the background, like the quiet girl Mizore. Sound Euphonium is a very multi-layered series, with lots of plot lines progressing simultaneously at the same time, so if you're not too interested in the Yori pandering, but never beyond friendship between Reina and Kumiko, you don't have to watch it, you can just look at the story between Natsuko, Mizore, Yuko and Nozomi. There's many more layers of it too as well, I'm not even breaking the surface of it yet. All the surrounding the central plot of a brass band trying to reach the nationals. It's compulsive viewing. Another interesting about the show, for a series focusing on music, but really make a point of using the lack of music in some scenes to its advantage. In a world where we're used to having some background music in every scene. Like that. At points in UFO 2, it's very loud in its absence. It sort of punches home a feeling that some scenes are meant to have. If you've not seen the first series, it's on Crunchyroll, and it's been released in America by Pony Canyon. Season 2 is airing on Crunchyroll on Wednesdays. 
and that's your lot for today. I'll try to bring back together my thoughts on a few more series later on in the week, so be on the look out for that. Thank you very much for watching, my name as ever has been Fuds. Remember to like and subscribe if you want more and leave comments about any shows I've missed, or just how wrong you think I am in the comments below. Bye bye.